Hi, I'm Steve from Sounds Heavenly. And today I'm going to give you all the information you need to ensure that you never buy a bad pair of loudspeakers again. I'll also tell you which songs you should never play when auditioning loudspeakers. And if you stay until the end of the video, I will close with some great ideas that can transform your enjoyment of music. Come and join me. For those of you who are new to my channel, my day job is making the cables that connect Bang & Olufsen speakers. If you're interested, you can see full details on my website at soundsheavenly.com. Now, as well as working in electronics, my love of music has given me the chance to spend much of my spare time working with local bands as a musician and recording engineer. This video condenses much of what I've learned about music listening over the past three decades into a few minutes. The first, we're going to discuss what are the best and worst songs to play when listening to some speakers that you're considering buying. Well, the worst song is very easy to define. It's any song that you don't know well, or a song that's recommended by the loudspeaker salesman when you call into the store. You can be certain that this song will have been carefully chosen either by the salesman or the speaker manufacturer to make those particular speakers sound incredible. It will usually be a really punchy atmospheric track that seems to flow around the room and fill with life and power with plenty of echoes and dramatic reverb. A nice spectacle of sound, but not really the best way to find out if those speakers will suit your musical tastes. So, if you shouldn't use the music suggested by the salesman, what do you listen to? Here's my suggestion. Now, many music lovers will have a magic album. It's the one they never seem to tire of, that gets played over and over, week after month after year, throughout their life. Well, this is mine. This is Tourism by Roxette, which I've heard on an almost daily basis for the past 28 years on literally hundreds of different types of loudspeakers and headphones. I've got to the point now where I don't just know every song word for word. I know when to expect the slip of a finger on Per Gessel's guitar string or when Marie Fredrickson's voice will just start to crack a little under the strain of a particular note. This collection of songs represents the soundtrack to my life, and now I instinctively know whether they sound right or wrong. If you've got your own magic album that encapsulates your love of music, the answer to this conundrum is simple. Go to your favourite online music store, download the highest quality of that album that you can possibly find onto your phone, and you've now got this in your pocket, ready to play any time you happen to pop into a hi-fi store or to visit a friend who wants to show off his new music system to you. If you don't yet have that collection of special songs, then don't worry, this is the perfect time to start putting that together. Make a physical note with pen and paper of the music that you hear that emotionally moves you, that you want to listen to again. Make an effort to make it accessible physically buy the hardware on disc or get it on a download onto your phone and hear it as often as you can. It will stretch and deepen your love of music and as you start to identify the songs you want to hear over and over again and you listen to them regularly, you'll find that you're now ready. You've got the tools you need to start making those decisions in the music store. So if this is a chance visit to the store or you're listening to a friend's music system with no plans to make a purchase, don't worry. You can relax, listen to your music and just ask yourself, how does it sound to you? Are you enjoying it? Are you blown away by the sound or does it leave you feeling a bit detached and emotionally uninvolved? Are you hearing new things in the background of the song that give you a different perspective on it? Or could you listen to this for hours? Does the tone of the music make you feel uncomfortable or on edge? 
They each speak as its own unique way of producing music, much in the same way that each professional singer has their own vocal characteristics. And you'll just generally know after a while whether a particular sound is right for you. Loudspeakers, incidentally, are in this modern electronic age the last part of an audio system that can have a big measurable impact on the sound that you hear. As long as you have good quality source music on the phone or on hardware music and you've got a reasonable set of electronics, reasonable audio system sort of producing that, then you don't need to worry. The differences between one system and another will be almost undetectable. However, the speakers are a physical instrument. You have moving motors that, that physically have to shift air in your room and normally there will be resonant cavities of, of air behind those speakers that act almost like a musical instrument and they have particular tonal characteristics. And this is the last bastion of hi-fi really, where the last place where you can make a good or a bad choice of speaker that will make a definite impact on the music you hear. Now, if this is a, a serious visit to a store, you're really potentially considering making a purchase, it's worth giving this just a little bit of extra consideration here. I mean, the obvious things first, check you've got time so you're not rushed and phone ahead or email and make sure the store has got the speakers you want to hear ready to listen to. And it's also worth checking that they actually have a quiet demo room or listening area rather than making you listen in a loud shop floor where people are coming in and out from the, the road and asking questions to the staff. And I'd actually suggest that you ask the cheeky question as well that can you hear the speakers in your own home before you make the purchase? Some stores will let you do that. And if you can, this is absolutely the best way to hear new speakers. As I mentioned, they act almost like a musical instrument in the way that they have resonant cavities of it that control the movement of air in the speakers. This means that without boring you with the science, they will interact with the air and the materials in your room. So that's why one speaker sounds different in a shop, potentially to in your living room. And if you can hear those speakers at home, you will know how they will sound for you after purchase. Whereas hearing them in store is a good indication, but not necessarily exactly what you'll get when you take them home. Now, if you're in store, I would suggest that you're bold and you ask for the volume control. As long as you're not planning to turn up the speakers to a crazy volume level that will blow them apart and upset all the other customers, most stores should be happy for you to set the volume that you're listening at to a comfortable level that works for you. And this should give you the best comparison to how those same songs will sound at home. And finally, positioning helps. In an ideal world, you should be listening to the speakers from about the same distance away as those speakers are spread apart. So if the speakers are six feet apart, try to get about six feet away from them and try to get the speaker drive units roughly at ear height. And you should then be hearing the speakers as they're intended to be listened to. So now just take the time, enjoy the music, try not to let the salesman rush or distract you, but obviously be aware that he may not be too happy about you spending eight hours in his store. Try to keep things reasonable. Focus on the song first that you know the best. And I would suggest you can fairly quickly identify whether those speakers are really contenders. And this is the point where I have to admit to a guilty secret. As I actually have a second song list that I take with me on the phone. This is not my magic album. This is for when I get the feeling that a particular pair of speakers or headphones has a particular issue, that they're not doing something quite right. And this is when I resort to my difficult songs that I play with the intention of making those speakers struggle. Now, I don't suggest this for a casual listener, 
But if you're like me and you are a nuisance and you have an inquiring mind and you have to get to the bottom of every problem, then this can help you to clarify exactly why you don't feel comfortable with the sound of a particular pair of speakers. So let me explain. If I ever sit down with you to listen to music and I put on Madonna's Sorry from the Confessions from a Dance Floor album, this isn't because it's one of those songs that I connect with on an emotional level. It's because I find that four note descending bass line that flows through the track is brilliant for identifying speakers that have a, a problem with deep bass or that produce bass in a muffled or over boosted way or those that don't properly balance the level of bass against the higher pitches. It's also interesting if you're listening to smaller speakers where you know that the bass response will be limited because it helps a track like this where the bass line moves in a particular way, you can listen to the volume and the tone of it as it flows downwards and see how those speakers cope as they get to their limits. Likewise, Jennifer Page's song Crush doesn't light any fires for me, but the strangely compressed and unreal vocal sound in this track make it really quite an interesting tool for testing speakers that I feel have an uneven mid-range and high pitch balance. As it, if you get the, ever get the feeling that you're listening to speakers through a, a megaphone with one particular tone being shouted at you, a track like this is a brilliant way to confirm your suspicions because it will very quickly become an uncomfortable to listen to through uneven speakers. Now you don't need to resort to tactics like this, but the thing to take away from the suggestion is that as you get to know your music better, you'll become better armed to use it to make the right choices of loudspeakers. Now, I did mention at the start that I would close with some tips that would transform your music listening. Here they are. Now, the, these are things that seem to be um, off limits to be discussed by music lovers. But I consider they are essential if you want to really enjoy your music. Now, first, as grown-ups, we all have faulty ears. I certainly do. Um, let's face it. No matter how good we think our own hearing is, it has degraded since our childhood, particularly in the higher frequencies of sound. Now, this is nothing to be ashamed of, but you should absolutely look to get a professional hearing check done to basically evaluate the condition of your hearing as a starting point, and plus to identify any health issues that could be impacting on how sound is reaching your ears. Now, as a music lover, the cost of visiting a doctor or audiologist for a test like this will be minimal compared to the amount that you're considering spending on your next set of speakers. So this really is a good investment. I cannot overemphasize this. Now, once you've got this test and the results on paper as a baseline for your performance of your ears, you should look at comparing this at regular intervals using one of the many free online hearing tests. Now I'll link to one of these in the video description. This way you can easily tell if your hearing is degrading further or if any issues are starting to appear. And the next thing I consider as being essential but which again for some reason no one talks about is to keep your ears clean and healthy. Now I wouldn't consider auditioning speakers with ears full of wax any more than I would present this video to you with a mouthful of cake. When getting your hearing test, the doctor or audiologist will be no doubt happy to advise on the safest way to keep your ears clean and healthy. And I think you'll be amazed at how this can improve your enjoyment of music. Now, if you've got any questions about connecting up your speakers, particularly if you have Bang & Olufsen speakers, but also for any other brands, please feel free to get in touch with any questions at soundsheavenly.com and I will be happy to help. To finish, I'm going to suggest a couple of videos for you. The top is a recent comparison that I filmed of three of the world's best loudspeakers, whilst below it is a link to an, what I think is a very interesting discussion between my good friends Henrik and Jeff 
about speakers and audio. Thank you for watching.